congestive heart failure, getting to the true root cause. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Michael Johnson. I'm a board certified chiropractic neurologist. I've been in private practice since 1983. And more importantly, I suffer with congestive heart failure. And I'll share that with you. So this is how I know the true root cause. And I'll tell you what it is, it's iron dysregulation, also known as iron overload. So you've got too much iron in your system. And you want iron circulating, you don't want it stored. And why, why should you have too much iron in your system? Well, think about it. From the time you're a little kid, you're eating iron fortified, iron enriched cereals. Uh, flowers iron enriched, so all your pasta and breads. Anything packaged has iron fortification or iron enriched. So it's way too much iron. And you can check how much iron you have in your system by checking your ferritin level. You can run this lab test on your own. Just go to any number of labs. Just Google, uh, check my own lab near me. They'll come up with request a test, any lab test now, walk-in lab, quest direct, lab core on demand, direct labs. Now there are some out there that'll say, oh, you need a magnesium, zinc, uh, and a copper panel, and you need an iron panel. That's $250. People with congestive heart failure will spend $29 to check their ferritin, but they don't want to spend $250 just to see if they have an issue. And I can promise you, you have an issue. How do I know? How am I so confident? Well, because I have congestive heart failure, and let me show you. My ferritin level, normal is 20 to 50. My initial ferritin level is 365. And here's my BNP. Look at this one. Look at that. 1024. This is back in January. Crazy, right? And now it went down the next month in February to 824. And now it's at 563. So I'm living it. My ferritin level has gone down 67 points from 365 to 298. I want to share with you the symptoms of iron overload syndrome. You may have them. I can promise you, you do. The, you've got the first one, inflammation. A congestive heart failure has massive inflammation. There's numbness, tiredness or fatigue, weakness, weight gain or loss, abdominal pain, high blood sugar levels, hyperpigmentation or bronzing of the skin, loss of sex drive, reduction in the size of the testicles in males, reduced or absent menstruation in females. If it continues over time, look what also develops. Chronic pain, arthritis, liver disease, cirrhosis, enlargement of the liver, diabetes, severe thyroid, heart disease, pancreatitis, high cholesterol. How many of you are on statins? And we're gonna talk about this in a minute. It drives me nuts. Cancer, stroke, kidney disease, lung disease. Do you see why I say this is the root cause? Let's talk about cholesterol. When iron is high, magnesium is low. When magnesium levels are low, the enzyme that creates cholesterol, HMG coenzyme A, goes into overdrive and creates excess cholesterol. Stress can cause high iron and low magnesium in your body. So stress can cause high cholesterol. And not just emotional stress, but environmental stress, heavy metals, poor diet, lack of sleep, mold, toxins, EMFs, and food allergies. Folks, that's why you have high cholesterol. High iron, low magnesium. As a result, that enzyme hits into overdrive, massive cholesterol. Ever hear that from your MD or cardiologist or internist? They're clueless. Clueless. Hell, they're getting kickbacks on the Lipitor. Why would they want to interrupt their uh, 
supply chain. You know, when I was first in practice, they didn't have any statins. 1983, if you were 300 or below, you're good. Now they want it at like 120. You need cholesterol for your brain. You need it to insulate your nerves. You need it for hormones. Ay, caramba. Aging. Aging is iron oxidation, rust. Due to too much iron in your system, inside the mitochondria, which stops the production of ATP. ATP is an energy carrying molecule inside the cell. That is the cellular event that causes aging. Folks, that's why you have high cholesterol. Well, you'll never hear it from your MD. Well, let's talk about blood work. Because yes, if your ferritin is high, say you run the $29 test, then you're gonna need the magnesium, zinc, and copper panel and the iron panel, along with a complete metabolic panel, a lipid panel, a thyroid panel, because thyroid drives your immune system and it drives your metabolism. And finally, a CBC, complete blood chemistry with auto diff, breaking down the red and white blood cells. So here's the test that you need to check for iron overload syndrome. Serum iron, iron saturation, total iron binding capacity, Ferritin, remember it should be 20 to 50. Transferrin, copper, ceruloplasm. Ceruloplasm, it, it truly is a master antioxidant, more so than glutathione. Plus it allows for the bioavailability of copper, which is important. But you, all, you want all of these to balance. You want red blood cell, magnesium levels, zinc, hemoglobin, your vitamin A, your vitamin A should be three times your vitamin D level. Red blood cells and hematocrit. Well, let me show you my initial uh, panels here. And it wasn't good. I just told you my ferritin level is 365. 300 or above is hemochromatosis. So my serum iron was 69 which is low it should be 100. my percent of iron saturation was 27 percent. that's okay my total iron binding capacity was 255 should be 340. look at that see when that ferritin level is skewed folks it skews everything and you're going to see that here 365 should be 20 to 50. now i've gotten my ferritin level down to 298 you just saw the change that I made on the BNP. I don't know how to make it any simpler, folks. When I say this works, I'm living it. Sorry, giving you the weather report. <laughs> you can tell I get passionate about things, especially after 39 years of seeing people get jacked around by their MDs. And I'm not anti-medicine. Some of my best friends are medical doctors. And I know medical doctors try, but they are just run by big pharma. I, I won't even go there. Serum transferrin was low, 217. My copper was a little high at 120. My ceruloplasm was a little low. Magnesium a little high. Zinc was low. My hemoglobin was low. I'm anemic. My vitamin A was the exact opposite of what it should be. Normal vitamin A should be three to one, vitamin A to vitamin D. I was one to three. My RBCs were normal and my hematocrit was a little low. Well, <coughs> that is just the iron panel and that is the magnesium, zinc and copper panel. Now you also wanna do HTMA, hair tissue mineral analysis. Take a little bit of the hair off the nape of the neck and measure that and compare it to the blood work. Why? Well, you saw that magnesium level was high, but it could be low in the hair analysis. So you got, this is why you have doctor in front of your name. You have to look at everything. And this is why you need a complete metabolic panel, lipid panel, thyroid panel, and CBC with auto differential. So you're looking at glucose levels, gut function, adrenal function, Adrenals are your stress glands, kidney function, and liver function. 
You need a complete lipid panel, not just for your cholesterol, and you need cholesterol for your brain, your nerves, for your hormones, but triglycerides. You want to look at your cholesterol HDL ratio, which shows you your risk of suffering a heart attack. You want to look at your HDLs and LDLs. You want to look at the red and white blood cells. That's a CBC without a differential. Your thyroid drives your metabolism. Why don't you want to look at that? And then finally, you want to look, inflammation is what's going to kill you, folks. Not cholesterol. Why did people die of heart attacks with low cholesterol? Because they have massive inflammation. I mean, right now, my, uh, my inflammation markers, my C-reactive protein is better, but my homocysteine is 20.4. It should be 6 to 7. So I got some work to do there. And when we get the blood work, when we get all of that, comes in this booklet. Literally, it's a booklet. It's all these pages. And so what we do for our patients is we put it into a database. And over here, this is my blood work, so I don't have any problem showing it to you. The red is above the, the lab range. The yellow is above the functional range. You want to be within the functional range. And that's important. It really is. So here's my brief history, just so you're aware. Uh, 2008, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's. 2009, I was diagnosed with MS. Went downhill, had some stem cell therapy. It helped me. Just recently, I ran into issues uh, with my gallbladder. I had severe pneumonia. I go in for emergency gallbladder surgery. They give me Lasix, which is a diuretic to help get the fluid off my lungs so they can do the surgery. But that crashed my kidneys. I went into severe acute kidney failure. And then that pneumonia flipped over to congestive heart failure. You saw my BNP, 1,024 in January. Now, in the last time I did it in March, it was 563. And I expect it to keep going down. Why? Because I'm, I'm decreasing that iron overload. Remember, my ferritin level went from 365, and ferritin is the stored iron in your body. You don't want stored iron, you want it circulating. So my ferritin should obviously be 20 to 50. Right now it's 298. I'm living what I'm telling you. Complete genetic testing. We don't want to leave any stone unturned. So yes, when I first introduced this video and told you that the true root cause is iron dysregulation, well, iron can, can also combine with hydrogen peroxide and it makes a hydroxyl radical. It's called a Fenton reaction, which is very toxic. But there's also glutamate that comes into play, histamine, mold, uh, EMFs, homocysteine, dopamine, sulfates, something called an NADPH steel. So again, the key is not to leave any stone unturned. When I first started working with doctors, and I'm proud to say that it's been uh, since 2006, uh, that's one of the things I just hit home. The one thing you don't look at is three months in, six months in, it's too late, the patient isn't getting better, and there's your cause. See, genetic variants, um, they're, they reduce function. They, some people call them mutations. They can cause inflammation, affects detox pathways, brain chemicals, hormone levels, organ function, vitamin and mineral levels. So there's, there's, you need to cover it all, <laughs> for lack of a better term. You really need to cover it all. And uh, unfortunately, what I see when patients are contacting me with chronic conditions, and they've been to 10 or 15 different doctors, uh, you look at the genetics and there's the keys to unlock in the safe. I mean, it's that intense. So just to recap, 
yeah, you want to do the magnesium. You want to do the zinc and copper panel. You want to do the iron panel. Very important. You want to do complete blood work. Complete blood work. And you want to do genetic testing. When I first started looking at genetics in 2013, 2014, uh, I started with Dr. Kendall Stewart. Great guy. There's Dr. Ben Lynch. I've studied with him. I've looked at his courses. Dr. Mark Harris. And now Dr. Bob Miller really has a, a great program that he's put together and charted out. And he has a lot of these uh, SNPs, they're called, uh, related to iron and related to all the other things I just spoke of. Because, see, I have a problem with glutamate. I have a problem with histamine. <laughs> I have a problem with mold, mycotoxins. I have a problem with homocysteine. And I can show you my initial homocysteine coming out of the hospital when I had my gallbladder surgery. Woo, it's 24.4. That's high. Normal should be six to seven. So you look at everything, not just one thing. Well, let's, Let's give credit where credit is due. Uh, I want to share a few books with you. This one, Strands of Health, uh, Rick Malter, talks about HTMA, hair tissue mineral analysis. Uh, probably the original magnesium man, the importance of magnesium. Uh, this is a great book. Cure Your Fatigue, Morley Robbins. Excellent, excellent book. He talks about the mitochondria, does a great job. Where I diverge from Morley uh, Robbins is, uh, I think you should support the mitochondria. I think you have to look at the complete picture and get all the blood work. I don't think you can use a cookie cutter approach. He does. Cookie cutter approaches work for some, not the tough cases. I'll tell you, me as a patient, I want an individualized approach. I don't want a cookie cutter approach. That's just me. Um, he doesn't like the use of zinc or calcium. Sometimes a patient needs zinc or calcium. It depends on the blood work and the HTMA. It depends on the patient. That's why you treat them as individuals. Another gentleman talking about iron overload, Ray Pete. I disagree with his approach to it. And another good friend of mine, Dr. Robert Selig down in Chicago, Illinois, I call him the master of minerals. The guy's probably the sharpest mind out there when it comes to minerals. Uh, just a great guy, personal friend of mine. So you can say, all right, I have congestive heart failure, but how do I know it'll work for me? Well, I told you that, folks. Just get a ferritin test, $29. Go to any lab test now. Just Google, order my own lab near me. Or go to your MD, say, look, I want a ferritin test. And he'll run it. Or maybe have him run the whole iron overload test. Well, I just don't have congestive heart failure. I have other conditions. Will it help? Yes, remember initially when I showed you all those symptoms, inflammation is the key to any chronic condition. Well, I hear this a lot. How long and how much? First thing I'll tell you is we have patient financing. And we do offer it. We have a lot of people take us up on it because it's not inexpensive. It's, it's not cheap. It's a lot of blood work we're doing. I mean, if you went to the hospital, had this blood work, it'd be $5,000. And no, insurance doesn't cover it. Um, plus, they aren't going to give me what I need to see to help you. So we offer 12... 18 and 24 month programs. We charge 11,995 for the 12 month, 14,995 for the 18 month, and 19,995 for the 24 month. That's what it takes. If you'd like to see if you qualify to be a patient, you can email me drmlj83 at gmail.com. What do I mean by qualify as a patient? It's, it's exactly what I mean. I mean, I've had patients, they won't change their lifestyle. 
They'll keep drinking a 12-pack of Diet Mountain Dew a day. They'll keep continuing to eat a lot of junk food. They are a COPD patient. They won't quit smoking. I don't... I'm done dealing with patients like that. You expect me to come and sprinkle fairy dust on you and you're all magically better. You have to meet me halfway. Share this video. Share it with your family, friends. Share it on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, social media. If you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe the channel. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. And again, my email, drmlj83 at gmail.com. That's what it takes, folks. I'm living it, just like I said. If you have questions, shoot me an email. I'm Dr. Michael Johnson. Thank you for watching this video. And I look forward to helping you in the future.